this guy has been kind of intriguing to me the more I do research on him, and that's uh, Tari Eason out of LSU. Mm-hmm. What, what do you think about Tari Eason's game? I like him a lot, man. He is a defensive playmaker. So I think that, I mean, it's Knicks fan TV, so I think they'd understand it. You remember the, the Hoopers and basketball players debate? Tari Eason is a Hooper. Like, I can watch guys and tell, like, all right, this guy grew up playing with a trainer. He grew up playing in a gym where he was dribbling off cones, doing imaginary moves against chairs, Mm -hmm. and someone just kind of made him robotic. Tari Eason, uh, he grew up hooping at the park. He just has this... uh, I mean, some of the instincts that you only get from just running up and down playing pickup. So when I mm. interviewed him at the combine, I was one of my questions and he laughed like, yeah, like, mm. yeah, I'm just a, a hooper. So I think he'd be a, a good fit in New York because he, I mean, on one possession, he can block a shot. The next possession, he can get a steal. He mm. can take it coast to coast. Game is kind of a little a little raw in a sense, mm-hmm. but he just has that those instincts that you just get from just playing pickup ball. Like he's mm-hmm. someone that he may not look great in a workout, right? Because you know, in the workout, they're probably like, All right, we want you to shoot mm-hmm. corner threes, we want you to relocate, pump fake jab, one dribble pull up. But then you put some butts in the seats, you put five on five and just say, hey, let's get up and down. I think that's where he's really going to going to shine. So, um, again, I just think that he has the defense to where he can guard multiple positions, six, eight, two, 17, huge hands. And uh, I didn't realize how important the hands were until I was talking to a friend of mine and he played in the NBA. He was just talking about Kawhi. I used to ask him questions like, is Kawhi really that good? He was like, man, that dude's fingers are this long. He's like, when, <laughs> when you're dribbling in front of him, he's getting a little finger on the ball all the time. And he was like, even like with his arms and his fingers, you can't even throw like skip passes. And he was like, it's that l- those little things that you don't really see. So I could see Eason. It's 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 a huge comparison, but I can see him being like this versatile, disruptive defender that blocks shots, gets steals. I mean, he has like two steals a game in like two 24 steals. minutes. Two steals, yeah. The shot is on paper, I think he shot like 36% from three. Mm-hmm. 35. So mm-hmm. it's respectable, but it's kind of like a low shot put. And I remember at, the, at his pro day, I sat next to some scouts and they were saying like, I don't know if he'll be able to get that off with NBA length because it's mm. such a low shot. So I don't know if he'll need to change it or make it a little bit faster, but it just depends on the gravity. You know, if you have a, you know, a a primary ball handler that is, you know, collapsing the defense, then it it, it helps a guy with a slower release to be able to get it off. But I like him a lot. It's just a, it's, I think he's a four, but if you Mm. keep Randall, which I know he's, Knicks fans want Randall. Yes. Out of there. Yeah, well, yeah, and we'll talk about that. Yep. <laughs> it, it's a, I mean, it creates a log jam at the four spot. Multi positional defender, right? I mean, Raphael says he leans four, but maybe he can guard some threes as well. He can and, definitely guard threes. And, and I look at it like, you know, yes, we don't have that initiator, but how do we help our offense? Well, we can help our offense with a guy who can play tenacious defense, with a guy who can get takeaways. I mean, look at, look at, I look at uh, Memphis's offense. Yes, they have John Moran, you know, superstar, forget about that. But in the half court, their offense was quite pedestrian. But the reason why their overall offense was so good was number one, offensive rebounds, and number two, takeaways. They were top, top two, top four in, uh, in transition buckets. And that was, a lot of that was off of steals, blocks, so on and so forth. You have R.J. Barrett, you have Obi Toppin, two guys who excel in transition in the fast break. You know, having a guy like an Eason who can, who can help you help your offense a little bit, um, I, I think, through his defense, I think that would be helpful. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. It's just, like, does the Knicks style on offense, you know, if it's, if it's a slow down style, then I think you can run into some spacing, space, spacing mm-hmm, issues mm-hmm. there. Um, but I like him a lot. I mean, I think he'd be a fan favorite. He's one that yeah, you know, I, I can be a little biased towards because I really like these guys that kind of come out of nowhere. They're not spoiled. 
they're not they haven't been reading about themselves since they were 12 years old as being the next star so they play with this chip on their shoulder when i talked to them and you know my first question was i said man where were a year ago where were you at you transferred from cincinnati to lsu barely made a blip on social media nobody cared and here you are you are at the nba combine your possible lottery pick and he just kind of lit up like a christmas tree like man i put in the work i worked so hard to to get here and so when i see a guy like that who wasn't you know a top 10 recruit wasn't a mcdonald's all-american he had to earn everything that that he has and so i think like those are the type of guys that i would i would fall in love with in, in as far as drafting because i i think there's there's still this motivation of proving that they belong 